Well, hello, YouTube, and special hello to my South Carolina Ansible class. Uh, great to be with you, everybody, even though this time it's virtually. So one of the things I promised my uh, South Carolina class for Ansible was to provide a walkthrough in video form of setting up a Ansible environment, a test environment, a practice lab, if you will, for working with Ansible and to do so in Amazon Web Services. So here you can see I'm at the main services page of AWS and we are gonna build our own virtual private cloud up there for the purposes of an Ansible practice lab. So when it comes to the VPC, you could certainly search for that up here, but I go to networking and content delivery just to give some context. This is our main networking component, our virtual private cloud, our own little piece of the Amazon web service infrastructure. If you go to your VPCs for the region you're in, and remember your region is in the top right, we're gonna be in the US East region for this. During our class, we discovered there was some things that about like US East 2, the Ohio region, we couldn't do, like dynamic inventory was one of them. So let's stick with US East 1 to make sure we get the full feature set as we move along with this practice lab. So if I go to the VPCs area, you can see that there is a VPC there, and that's the default virtual private cloud. And we could certainly use that, but typically what we want to do is we want to create a unique VPC for ourselves for something like this. So that would include a production environment we're spinning up. So for my name tag on all this stuff, I'll begin with Ansible. So this will really be great for me to identify our Ansible stuff inside my AWS environment. So I'll do Ansible underscore VPC, and we then have to pick an IPv4 CIDR block, and we'll just do the 10.x uh, dot X range, and we'll do a 16-bit mask. That's gonna give us plenty of subnets we can create later on, and we'll stick with the default of no IPv6 at this point, and the default tenancy, and we will create that VPC. Awesome. So there's our Ansible VPC that we have created. And now next up, we'll want to place a subnet inside of that VPC. Here you can see all of the default subnets that went along with the default VPC, but we're going to create a new subnet. We'll call it Ansible underscore subnet, and we're going to place this in the VPC that we created, and we're going to uh, not stick it in a particular availability zone, we don't care. We have no preference on the availability zone selection, but that is pretty neat that you would be able to strategically place subnets in different availability zones. So there's our CIDR block that we set up for the VPC. So now we're going to do 10.0.1.0, for example, and this is a 24-bit mask. So this is going to be the 10.0.1 subnet inside our major 10.x range. So we'll choose create and close that up. So now we have our Ansible subnet. The next thing that we're going to want to do is, remember, before heading to the route table, we really want to create our internet gateway. And this is going to give internet reachability to the subnet that we just created. So I will say Ansible underscore internet gateway IGW and we will create this thing and then we'll close that up and we can see our Ansible gateway and notice easy to miss believe it or not it looks real obvious now though there's that red detach state so we want to go ahead and attach this to a VPC this internet gateway and of course we're attaching it to the Ansible VPC that we created. Now that we have an internet gateway, it's time to create a routing table for our infrastructure. We'll call this Ansible underscore RT for route table. We're of course gonna put this in the Ansible VPC. So we are now having this Ansible route table and we're gonna go to the routes area and we're gonna choose edit routes. 
we need to add a default route so that we will direct traffic that's destined not to our own IP address space, but to anything out on the internet, return traffic. Like when we come in to manage these devices, we want them to be able to communicate back to us. And we're going to point this to the internet gateway that we created for our Ansible topology. So I'll choose save routes. We'll close that up and easy to forget. We need to go in and we need to associate the subnet we created with this routing table. So I'm going to choose our subnet, the Ansible subnet we created and associate it with this routing table. And we are good to go there. In fact, we are now good to go with the network infrastructure that would serve our Ansible practice lab. Pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is go up to services and we'll go over to EC2 and we are going to spin up a machine that will serve as our Ansible control node. Yeah, that's the one that's going to be managing all of our boxes. So I'm going to go to the running instances area where we don't have a single running instance and I'm going to choose launch instance. And notice we have this free tier eligible Amazon Linux 2 image and this is based on like CentOS and Red Hat Linux. So this will actually do great for our Ansible control node. So I'll select that. We'll stick with the T2 micro, which is free tier eligible for those of you in the free tier, like I am with this account. And then we are going to go and put that in the Ansible VPC, in the Ansible subnet, we want to enable the automatic assignment of public IPs and we can leave everything else at the default. Next, we'll choose add storage. It's going to be an eight gig root volume general purpose SSD. That's great. And then we'll want to add a name tag and the name tag will be Ansible underscore control underscore node. And then uh, we're going to add additional tags to the devices that we're controlling, and I'll talk about that when we get there. So let's go to our next step, which is the security group. We're going to create a new security group here called Ansible underscore SG for security group. And notice we're going to allow SSH into this box so we can manage it. We could lock this down to our public IP address that we're coming in with. But being that it's a practice lab, I'm not overly concerned about security. So we'll just go ahead and launch this new instance. And let's create a new key pair because you would be in that situation most likely. So I'll go ahead and call this Ansible underscore key pair. And you are going to download uh, this key pair. The system extension, blah, 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 is not compatible with this version of the Mac. All right, that's weird. Uh, just some weird Mac error there unrelated to what we're doing, I believe. So Ansible underscore key pair. I'm going to download that key pair and we're going to choose launch instance. So our instance is spinning up now. And if we go to view instances, we can see that that virtual machine is spinning up and it's going to take just a moment, especially with the Amazon Linux image that we're using. We're going to find that it, you know, is brought up and ready to use in a remarkably quick fashion. And of course, there we go. A couple of refreshes and we can see it's ready to go. So we would want to connect to that. And when we choose connect, it's going to give us the string that we would need at the command line in order to SSH into that box. Now notice that the key must not be publicly viewable for SSH to work. So we can chmod 400 that key pair once we locate it in the location where we want it. So I'm going to go down here and ask to see that PEM file inside of the finder. And I'm going to take that, let me right click it and I'll choose copy and I'm going to go into my OneDrive and I have a folder in there for my AWS keys. And so I will paste that in there and 
once we have the Ansible key pair inside that location, I'll do the ch mod, and we're going to do that, of course, from the terminal. So let me launch the terminal on my Mac system. By the way, this would all work in Windows as well. I just happen to be on a Mac this evening. And we are going to do this. I'm going to go CD OneDrive CD AWS underscore keys. And then we'll do, and look at this, I can just copy it right from here, the command that we need to set the appropriate security on our key pair. So we're going to do the ch mod there. And now if you're in the directory where that PEM file exists, and we are, we're going to execute the SSH command in order to get into that box. We're going to say, yes, we are sure that we want to connect to this device presenting this certificate that is self-signed and boom, we're in. Awesome. And it even tells us, hey, you should probably do a sudo yum update right now in order to update this uh, Linux, AWS Linux 2 system. So there we go. We're updating the software on this baby. And that is great. This is going to serve as our Ansible control node. So while that's going on, let's go over and let's go into our EC2 dashboard and we're going to launch another instance. And one of the things that I would recommend is that you have some fun here. Install a couple different flavors of Linux. And for that matter, you could even spin up a Windows server in here in your practice lab. And these are going to be systems that you are going to be managing. So I'll just do one to give you the idea here. And it's going to be an Ubuntu box that we're going to be managing. So I'm going to put this in the Ansible VPC, the Ansible subnet. We will do the auto assignment of a public IP so we can initially manage this thing. We'll choose add storage. We're going to choose add tags. I'm going to give it a name tag. This is going to be uh, Ansible underscore host one. And I'm going to give it another name tag right now. Uh, not a name tag, excuse me, but I'm going to give it this value. I'm going to say the key will be Ansible and the value will be host. And this is going to come in very valuable for us later on. For instance, if we do a dynamic inventory in Ansible, where it's going to dynamically pull all of our in EC2 instances down into the inventory, well, one of the things you would want to do is be able to uh, define where you're running your Ansible playbooks, and you would want to specify that it's on all of your hosts. So having a key called Ansible and a value called host would easily enable me to run playbooks just on the systems that I want to manage. That is not a requirement, but as you'll see later on, it's going to be really cool. So as far as a security group goes, I don't need to create another one. Let me just reuse that Ansible security group that we created. And I'm going to choose launch. And we will leverage the existing Ansible underscore key pair that we created. So we'll check that we do have access to that. And we will launch that instance. Now, if you wanted to not add variety like I'm doing, we know that's an Ubuntu box that's spinning up. If you wanted like two or three or four of those boxes, remember, once that spun up, you could go up to the actions menu and you could choose launch more like this. But I'm not going to do that because, as I said, one of the things I'll populate in here is a couple different flavors of operating system to make it more realistic for us when we are in the Ansible control node and we're getting things done. That Ubuntu is spun up. So let me just show you the actions menu now. See, it's highlighted. You'd be able to select it, launch more like this if you wanted to. So there is a nice walkthrough for you on constructing your virtual private cloud in Amazon Web Services for an Ansible practice lab. That is just how easy it is. And we've already got a control node up and we've already got a host node 
hey, let me resize that. What's going on? I probably have to, um, wow, it's not letting me resize any of those. This may have to do uh, with that error I saw on my Mac right now where it's not wanting to get along with the uh, AWS management console. That's crazy. Yeah, anyways, so there is our Ansible host one and our Ansible control node. And that's great that we spun those up so quickly in their own virtual private cloud inside of AWS. Now, I'm going to take a break from this project and I'll be recording another video soon where we'll go and you'll see that I have my additional hosts that I put in here. And then, of course, I'm going to do a video walking you through the Ansible installation on the Ansible control node. Remember, that's all we need with Ansible is just the Ansible software running on the control node. We're going to use SSH to go and manage all the other systems. We don't have to install anything Ansible related on those host systems. So that's a nice feature. So in the next video, we'll be walking through the installation of Ansible on the control node. But thanks so much for joining me for this video where we really got a twofer, right? This video serves as a great look at how you can quickly build infrastructures in AWS, and it's also getting us set up for more fun with Ansible. Now, since I am pausing from this whole activity, not a bad idea for me to just go up now under the Actions menu and go to Instance State, and I'll just stop these running instances. But for my South Carolina class, you know me, I am just super crazy about this, and that is the graceful shutdown. I always want to make sure of that. So let me go out to that running node that we uh, created together, and I'll do my sudo shutdown-h now, and we have just shut down that system gracefully, and I'm going to go in to the host and do that as well. So the Ansible host one system, I'm going to go up and let's make sure we can connect. We haven't connected to this one. So we are using the same key pair. So it's going to be super easy to connect to this one. We just need to make sure we're in the right directory. We already have the right permissions on the uh, PEM file. So I'm going to go into that AWS keys. I'm going to right click, choose paste get into that device, and then we're going to say, hey, thanks so much. Let's do a graceful shutdown of that system, which we just did. So there we go. Even though we're in the free tier, if you left these machines running 24 hours a day, day after day after day after day, you would run up against limitations of the free tier account. And these would start costing you the fraction of pennies an hour that we would be charged for these images. So we don't want that. So I'll just make sure we're shut down. And we are. And it's time for me to say goodbye until the next video, which will be posted on YouTube very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching.